Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse The Joker from the Dark Knight Trilogy. I know this is probably a lot of people's favorite version of the Joker. It's certainly, I'm guessing it's most people's, I shouldn't say, make assumptions. It's my favorite live action Joker. I don't see the appeal of Jack Nicholson's Joker. I just don't, I, I don't get it. Anyway, this figure, a lot of people were excited about it. Same thing for the Batman and the rest of the wave. I think most people are disappointed. I'm here to tell you it's not that bad. <laughs> it's got some good stuff going for it. There's some nice things, but also it's a lot of bad stuff too. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands just about, we'll say seven and a quarter inches, not counting his hair. That's gonna be about 18 and a half centimeters. Here he is up against Batman for a height comparison. He looks like he's just a touch taller than Batman, which is funny because in real life, this guy is an inch taller than this guy. I don't know if that's how it was in the movie, but that's the way it is in the figures. And here he is up against Darwin, who's always got his hands doing something. There you go, chin height. All right, question of the day, which live action Joker is your favorite? If you say Jared Leto, you're just gonna have to leave. You're just gonna have to leave out of shame. Uh, but let me know and then, then leave. But before we get into the rest of the review, we have to talk about today's sponsor, which is Into the AM. And we're talking about them because they are having a 20% off site wide sale right now. They are the elevated clothing company. They have all of these cool designs in the t-shirts. They have other things too, but I really focus on the graphic tees because I love them. And I think you guys will too. Most of you have bought them. Uh, but yeah, you can get all kinds of different things on their site. And if you want to save some money, you can use the link in the description below. That'll save you some money. You can also bundle the graphic tees or the regular tees, or you can do the subscription service where you save even more money, but you don't get to pick the shirt. Totally up to you, but I definitely recommend you check them out. They're super comfortable. They look great. They fit great can't beat them. Love these shirts. They are the best graphic tees I have ever worn. So check them out. Link in the description below. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the aesthetic on this guy. Looks very plasticky. Very, very plasticky. The purple coat, just solid purple plastic for the arms, the coat, buttons, everything's just solid purple. His vest, solid green. No paint job on the buttons. The pants, they're not actually painted. That's a texture sculpted onto them which is actually pretty clever. I think that's a good way to do that. It gives the pants the stripey pattern without having to paint that, and it actually makes it much cleaner than a paint job would have been. So I do like that, though they are fairly shiny. He's not supposed to be shiny. Uh, his little chain or whatever that is, it's huge. I think that's a chain. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a chain. And it's huge. Isn't that for his pocket watch? I don't know, that wouldn't be in that pocket. I don't know what that is, I don't remember. But it, it seems big for what it is, but it is gold and shiny. His shoes are fairly well detailed in terms of sculpt, but no paint. His gloves are a separate purple from the coat, just to be clear, there's some differentiation there. And then for the inner shirt here, again, all molded plastic. I thought the tie was a separate color, but I think it's just because it's a separate material. It's, it's very close to the same color. And then for the head, this is where we get to some paint and it's not terrible. It definitely could be a lot better, but you can see they even got like the forehead wrinkles and stuff. It's not bad. And it's hard for me to say if the sculpt is good because of the paint job, but it's not bad. It definitely could be better, but this is I think an acceptable 20, $25 figure, whatever they cost now, I don't remember, 25 bucks probably. I think it's acceptable. It's not impressive, it's acceptable. The hair is awful though. The sculpt is way too soft and it's like glossy paint. There's two colors in there so that looks nice but the hair definitely doesn't look good. Bad sculpt, bad paint. And here's the thing that really throws me off on this figure. The proportioning. His legs are freaking huge again and his arms are really long. But he's got a tiny little head and a human sized body. In fact, the head would look normal if it was just the head and the body, but the really long legs and, and baggy pants and then the long arms, it throws this guy off. He does not look like a human. His head's way too small given the overall size of his body and his legs are way too big given the rest of his torso or given his torso and his head. So as usual, McFarlane Toys doesn't understand proportioning. It's so weird. Does Todd not look at this stuff or does he not care? Because Todd can draw, which means Todd probably understands proportions human anatomy and whatnot. What's happening with the action figure line? Why are they all so weird? Very weird. So aesthetically, I'm gonna give this a five out of 10, because there's one other thing I forgot to mention, and that is his diaper piece, which looks like 
he filled it. Is his diaper full? Did he need to get changed before he came out as an action figure? Because it's... I don't know, maybe that's how he robs bank. I don't, I'm not gonna get into it. It doesn't look great, it looks pretty weird. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it there. So let's go ahead and dive into the accessories, which is where you're probably gonna be most impressed. This guy does, I'm gonna save the best for last. He comes with his collector slash trading card, which is just artwork from the movie. I guess that's okay. It has nothing to do with the action figure directly. You get the super wonderful DC display stand made out of black plastic. And then you get his, not his knife, not the shotgun, nothing that he's used in the movie other than this pile of horribly executed money. Cash money. There's a peg on there for his foot, so you know, if you need him to stand there, he can. Why the hell is the peg there? What's that for? I guess so that you can use that instead of the DC display stand. You can just have him standing next to some money. I don't get it, but here's the thing about the money. Is that's not what money looks like. <laughs> At all. There is zero effort put into this other than a dry brush. They didn't paint the bands. They obviously didn't put any detail on the money to make it look like money. If you're not looking close at this or didn't know what this was, you might not know what it is. It's not even really the right color for US currency. It's horrible, horrible. Zero out of 10 for accessories. They lost some points there out of spite for being lazy and stupid for not including a gun or a knife. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the articulation. Head being on a double ball peg, it cannot lean back. I don't know if that's because of the hair or because of the sculpt, but it can look down, it can lean side to side. Yeah, that'll be good enough, I think. You can you can get, didn't he do like a, a stance like that at some point? Most definitely, had to have. <laughs> so you can do that. Shoulders on this guy. They look like they're about to pop out. You do get horizontal. Is that a curved arm again? A little bit. You could get horizontal, full rotation, bicep swivel where they just left the cut for the bicep in there. So, you know, these are as lazy as they can be. You don't need to leave the cut in there. These are action figures. If you do it, they only kind of look good in the neutral position. We're not buying statues, McFarlane Toys. Action figures, you have to count, account for the articulation. Double jointed elbow does work nicely and it doesn't have a bunch of gaps in it, so that's okay. I'll take that. And then the wrist on this guy is the ball hinge. So that's nice. If you want a little ball hinge, you get that in there. Oh, by the way, he does have a trigger finger hand. Uh, no gun. Just, just a reminder, no gun, no knife, nothing for him to hold. But we had a trigger finger hand and a fist, which is more fists than Batman usually gets. All right, for the torso, it's hollow. What do we have going on in here? Can we lean him? Well, he can't really lean forward. Can he lean back? Uh, yeah, of course he can lean back. <laughs> I mean, that's what action figures are for, right? Leaning back, not forward ever, only back. So he does lean back relatively well. Leaning to the side is okay until his coat gets in the way. The coat, by the way, they cheated. There's not like a whole layer of green all the way around. It's just enough green on the front. So this is connected, which means that's gonna limit articulation. You do get your waist twist, of course. Bringing the legs forward. I'm guessing that filled up diaper is gonna be a problem. And it is, that's as far as they go without really forcing the diaper, which means that's as far as you're probably gonna to wanna to put them. Going back, you get virtually none. Going out to the side, it actually works pretty well. I'll take that. Thigh swivel, non-existent. Time to rate the cake. Uh, hard to say with this style of pant, especially as high as McFarlane has put them. They're just about up to his nipples. Uh, I'm gonna give his cake a two. It's not impressive in any way, but it is there to some degree. All right, let's check the knees. Double jointed knee. Works pretty well. That is not bad. Proportioning is okay. Hinge works, so I'll take it. And then for the ankles, we have a ball hinge, which has three positions. So it's gonna be very hard to find that neutral stance. And everything is stuck on these ankles other than the hinge. I couldn't get the top rotation to work. I can't get the ankle rotation to work. So, or the foot rotation, whatever you wanna call it. So it is a ball hinge, but I can't, mine are completely stuck. So hair dryer and you should be okay. Toe hinge on this guy, well placed, well enough sculpted. Not super floppy, so that's all right if you like a toe hinge. So articulation overall on this guy is pretty, eh, 
it's okay. I'll give it a five. It's fine. It For a Joker, it'll be all right. It's fairly reasonable, although you definitely could have done better in the hips and I guess in the body too, because they could have cut the coat properly to let it pose. So time for a final verdict on this release. This wave, a lot of people were hoping this was going to be McFarlane Toys, like cream of the crop. They finally, they came into their own. Look, we went 15 years back and made figures of a really popular franchise, so they're going to be really good. And instead, they really just phoned them in. This guy is not as good as Batman, and Batman was not impressive. So I'm going to give this guy an overall rating of 6 out of 10. If you don't look too close, it looks pretty good. If you only look at that part right there, you might think, hey, that's a decent a decent $25 figure of Heath Ledger Joker. But then if you look at the whole thing, it's like, eh, it's not really. It's really, really not. He almost looks like he's on stilts. Looks bad. So I'm going to stick with that. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. But otherwise, well, that's it. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down will do. And if you haven't subscribed, you should consider it. I have new videos almost every day. It's every day but Wednesday and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.